you put out a very passionate, very strongly worded note to your clients on Micron saying that you believe this was a complete sham of a court ruling. I assume you think that this court ruling was done particularly to poke the United States in the eye over this tariff fight. That, that's what our belief is, and I'm not a particularly passionate person, actually. So the fact that I was so strongly believe in this, uh, I think, should say something to the people that know me. But yes, we think that this is uh, this really is a problem because this is legitimate IP that has been shown in Taiwan to have been directly stolen, and now we're actually seeing it as having been legitimized as being stolen uh, by Micron as opposed to from Micron. Yeah, and so just as a backstory, in case our viewers are a little bit confused, I'm going to summarize it. If I'm wrong, please just t jump in and say, hey, Sullivan, you're wrong, which is basically that two employees of Micron left the company, allegedly took IP, started another company or sold it to a new company, a two-year-old company. The, that patents, those patents, which ostensibly belonged to Micron, were upheld by a Chinese court. Effectively, they upheld the validity of what many, including you, obviously believe was stolen Micron technology. That, that's right. The, the two employees actually went to a Taiwanese company called UMC, which is a foundry like TSMC, and they have a partnership with this new Chinese uh, memory manufacturer who's called Jinhao. Jinhua, yeah. sorry. Yeah, Jinhua. And so basically, you believe that, that you called it a kangaroo court. You said this is a joke because effectively these are long standing Micron you know, IP, and there's a two year old company that now claims to have effectively developed technology that would have taken a lot longer to do so. Essentially, I mean, Micron was started in 1978. They've been competing every year fairly against other companies. They're not the number one memory company in the world. Samsung is, but they continue to hold their own technology. And for another company to come in and after only three years of development to be at this level is frankly ludicrous. Yeah, and, and they also rushed to judge. There was a rush to, to end this this case on that day and have an injunction against Micron products. Yeah, I'm not, the world, I'm not the world's expert on Chinese patent courts, but I know this was a very speedy ruling. But that's the risk, isn't it, Eric? I mean, do you think that, that China, forget about the tariffs, that they may start to do these kinds of things. This is the kind of fight that we could see with other United States companies. It's not so obvious. It's not so direct. And it'll be done under sort of the, the cloak of legitimacy. No, absolutely. This has always been our fear, and we've actually been watching it, unfortunately, unfold over 20 years of covering the semiconductor and electronic space in particular, as well as other spaces. But what seems to happen is that companies are required to share their IP or a part of their IP um, with their Chinese counterparts, and that then goes into the pool that uh, the, the Chinese can, can draw from. And, of course, They've been upholding patents, uh, international patents to date, but what happens when that stops? There's a lot of IP that's been transferred into China. Mm -hmm. What happens if we have rulings like this uh, you know, over, over a whole number of different areas, not just in semiconductors, but in technology in general? It is going to be something important to watch. The Micron case could be a loan or it could be a litmus test for what is to come and what could be a nasty and protracted fight. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.